Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. We are showing our frugal side again today because I went back to the Dollar Tree and found so many more things to use in the craft room. So let's get started with the first thing. Envelopes. Yes, envelopes. Now they're not the thickest of envelopes, but look at how this here fits my slimline card. I was like, yes, please. There's 40 to a pack and um, they fit beautifully. So I was super excited about that. And then I saw these little ones and I said, how cute would this card size be? So in the future, I'm gonna be making some cards based on that size. Let's move right into some organization. We got a lot to talk about this, this video, so we gotta keep it moving. All right, so with this one right here, I love that they have a lid and I love that they're little three compartments. So I'm also really digging the clear plastic look. I don't know, I just like to see what's in there. So that's how I have one in use. I use my, for my blending brushes, but you can separate extra pieces that you're working on so they're not scattered all over your craft desk. Or you can put a little um, powder bag in there or maybe, I don't know, some mint tape, whatever you want, the sky's the limit. And so I have those things there, but I decided that I wanted to organize one of my drawers next to me um, because I like to have my most used embellishments right next to me. And so what I did was I just took that and placed it down in there and then I was able to put some of those um, highly used uh, little sequins things and glitter right there. So it's just nice and neat, it makes me happy. Let's move on to cups. Now I am an amateur at best when it comes to resin projects. Um, but I realized as I did try to practice, you go through a lot of materials with resin. So I haven't mastered any kind of uh, resource stewardship <laughs> with that yet. But yeah, so anyway, I thought, well, you're going to pay a lot for the, that kind of stuff. So you check that out. If you're a resin person, check that out. But I also found these little mini red cups, which I thought were fun. So I'm going to make my own sequence mix. So I have my little handy dandy spoon and I'm gonna pour it in there. And the cool thing about this, uh, these little cups, which I thought they were gonna be really staticky because you know sometimes sequence just sticks to everything. Well, they weren't. So I can like flip them back and forth to each other and not a lot, hardly any was sticking in there. So that's good. Even if it does stick, take your little anti-static powder bag right here and dab a little powder in there or use it for storage. I'm putting this bag everywhere apparently um, and try that and it won't stick as easily. But let's see if it'll hold some glue. So I tried out this, nope, try that out, nope, <laughs> it's not working, but it does hold Nuvo glue. So we are in business if you're working and you wanna keep your stuff upside down. So those are the little red cups. All right, we're moving into silicone gloves. Why would I possibly need silicone gloves in the craft room? Well, I have here my little trash can, but I don't know about you, but when I'm using a chamois to clean up my stamps or a baby wipe, I will it will find its way to my project and ruin it. So I have this hanging on the side of my trash can and I can put my little chamois, my little cleaning scrubby in there and it is out of the way. So I am super excited about that. So now it's up on there and it's not gonna ruin my projects. And so I'm just gonna show you, I have this one right here. This is like an old car chamois or something that I cut up. And uh, yeah, so we're good. Okay, but speaking of chamois, this is where I self-identify how lazy I actually am. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this, I've got this water bottle at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna pour some water into the bottom part of it because it's, I guess it's supposed to be sort of like ice or snacks, I don't know, but it comes apart. And so I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm just gonna let my, my chamois just soak up all that water without having to get up from my seat. How clever is this little gadget? I mean, it's dreadful to think about another water bottle in my house, <laughs> but this one will stay in my craft room and it won't bother anyone else. And you can actually pour this dirty, disgusting water back into the bottle, fill up that top portion. So now you can just kind of go back and forth with it and I never had to get up, it was great. Um, but yes, just make sure you do not drink out of it because that would just be gross. Okay, we're moving into containers. So Dollar Tree has tons of containers. On my top drawer, this is legit how it looks. 
just acrylic blocks everywhere and they move around when I open them and then they're all stuck like in the back and I don't even know what's in there. It's just super frustrating. So when I was at the Dollar Tree, I picked up a couple of these. Now these have rubber stops on the bottom of them, the ones on the left, and they're just really nice and low, low profile. They fit into the Alex drawers really nicely. This is a judge-free zone, so don't look at all my dirty acrylic blocks. Um, but we, right here, I'm just piling them up and getting them all nice and neat in order. I love it. So yeah, this, this turned out really nice. I like the way that they um, just fit all of them. I realized in this process that I have too many acrylic blocks, but that's besides the point. But then you can use other things, like if you have an adhesive drawer, you can keep those so they're not rolling around all over the place. So now this is what my drawer looks like. What? Oh, that just makes my um, organization heart happy. Okay, so there, now look, and I'm shaking, and I'm giving it a good shake, and there's nothing happening. Those aren't going anywhere. Success. Okay, let's move on to the little ones here. So in the little, on the little ones, I just picked those up because I like to just keep things compartmentalized. And so I have ink pads on the left and then I have all my white pens on the right. Now I would only recommend this storage for ink pads if they can be stored like upside down like that or on its side if you will. Um, if they're not supposed to be stored that way just make sure you're careful. So let's do a little Dollar Tree craft. So I picked up this clipboard from the Dollar Tree as well as this corkboard sheet and I had this magnet laying around. So I knew I just had to keep it for one day for a rainy day and here it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sort of like a little um, clipboard of my most reached for dies and just a little place where I can hang some pictures or some notes or something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to make a cut to know where I need to use my um, uh, trimmer with. But I will tell you it was really cool how easily this corkboard sheet just cut right through. So then I'm just going to line it up at the bottom and I am just going to try to make this fit. I sized it to the bottom of the clipboard because I liked how big the magnet size was. You can do a full magnet sheet, whatever you want but I put some double-sided adhesive on the back of this magnet sheet. And I love how it already came with this little indent to the top of the clipboard. So I thought that was kind of fun and very serendipitous, if I may say. And then I'm just gonna pull the backing sheet off of this um, cork board here, which I think is really cool that it comes in um, adhesive sheets. So that makes it really simple to play with and use. And then I'm just gonna be able to put all of my favorite dies uh, the ones that I really need close and I don't feel like digging out. And so maybe there's some sentiments you always use or I know I use my rectangle die all the time. And so I'm going to put those up there. And then I tried to use a push pin, but it's a little bit shallow. So what I did then to fix that was I grabbed a straight pin and I put it to the side. And so this way it kind of slides into the cork from the side and it stays. So that was pretty cool. Just make sure you're going down into it enough to make it hold. And so uh, that was it, just a cute little project. And I'm gonna put this right next to, on top of all my other dies. And now I have it easily reachable. And I could hang a little nail up there and put that through because there's a hole on the clipboard. All right, we're stopping in here with a real quick one, and this is a silicone mat. So I don't know about you, but my uh, glue gun, it always finds a way to drip on not the mat it comes with because it's like the size of a dime. So you have this big old silicone mat, and you could put your glue gun right on top of it and have no issues. Next one up is coupon folders. Now, I'm not a coupon collector, but I have always admired those who do that because it's incredible. But I am going to use this coupon folder to store my slimline cards, my finished cards. So I haven't found a clear envelope yet for those slimline cards to keep them nice and safe. But I have this and you can fit four or five cards I think in there. They would also make a really cute set. So if you put your slimline cards in there and then you gave them away as a gift, wrap a ribbon around it or something like that, that would be really fun for the holidays too. So um, I have a couple of these coupon folders because I only have about 10 or so slimline cards done. And so then it'll keep them nice and protected. So I like that one, that, that was a fun find. Okay, the next up product here to use in my craft room, metallic markers. 
I'm going to be honest with you. I thought this was going to be such a wash. Like this is going to be useless. Um, but they are pretty cool. Now I can't tell you how long they're going to last. That will probably be done in a follow-up video, but they write so well and they're smooth and there's no gapping in them. I was really impressed with those markers. So you have silver, gold, and white. And who doesn't love a white marker? <laughs> on, shows up really well on that black cardstock. So then I'm gonna just try it real quick on the white. Um, looks really great for the gold and silver. And to the right there, I didn't put this in the video, but those are the glue, the glitter glues from Dollar Tree. And I, that's what they look like dried. So they're pretty good. You can add a little accents to your cards with those. Pretty awesome. That's just a bonus. All right, so I found a lot of Velcro at the Dollar Tree. It comes in all kinds. And so I thought this was really fun for crafters. There's a lot of things that you can do with Velcro. Um, I had used some of it to hold some things on my wall, but then if you're doing interactive cards and you want to make maybe a matching box to put it in, you could have a little um, enclosure with the Velcro. So I thought that was kind of cool to show. Okay, glitter nail polish. Buckle up because this is super fun. This was one of my favorite finds to do um, for card or paper crafting. So I have the gold and the silver glitter nail polish picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna take this makeup sponge here and I'm gonna cut it in half because obviously I'm doing this video so you know I'm cheap. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna have uh, one for my project here. So what I'm gonna do is just pull out some already colored up images and things that I had in my stash. And I'm gonna take the glitter nail polish, the silver first, and you wanna put it on to the sponge first, not paint right onto your project. And the reason for that is because now you're gonna be able to control a little bit more about where the glitter goes. You're also not gonna get globiness from the clear part of the nail polish. And so you're just going to be left with this really pretty um, accent to your projects here. I'm gonna show you in the gold in a second, but just load it back up and put some more onto those images, onto the card base, whatever you're doing. It's one of my new favorite things to do, um, but a dollar for this embellishment. It's awesome. And when it dries, of course, it's going to dry clear and all you're going to see is the glitter. So it's just a really super fr fun way to add uh, lots of sparkle and shine and it doesn't rub off always a plus for that. But I will tell you, if you want to add glitter to your nail polish as well, this is also the technique that you should try. Put it onto this, a sponge like this so it can soak up some of that liquid and then dab the glitter onto your nails and it'll be so pretty. I've done it before. But I'm showing you the gold here real quick and I'm covering this black card stock with the gold and it's going to shine or it's going to dry a little bit shiny because of the clear which is fine by me um and then you're just going to see all that gold left over so there is that and then i'm going to show you close up the uh the two silver ones so just such a pretty accent so excited about this one this one was a lot of fun and so cheap hello a dollar okay so here we go moving on to the next one photo paper now, you know, I always have to put a fail, a fail or a disappointment in there at some point. Photo paper is probably good for printing photos, but I thought because I have used photo paper before from HP for my alcohol inks, I thought this might work for this as well. And I won't say that it didn't work at all, but I'm going to show you in comparison. This one was kind of a flop, um, but they sell photo paper at the Dollar Tree if you're looking for that. <laughs> but maybe not for this technique. But I'm gonna show you really quick, I'm going through dropping first. As you can see, you see that blender solution. It's almost like it just soaked right into the paper, so it wasn't helping me move anything around as much. Now I'm getting a little bit of a look. I mean, it's better than it just soaking right into, say, cardstock, but it's not optimal. I guess I'll say that. If you're in a pinch and you're looking for something and this is all they have, it's something. But what's better is either the poster board, which I'm going to show you here. This is poster board from Dollar Tree. Um, and I got these results and it works wonderfully. Or they also um, sometimes sell um, Brea Reese waterproof paper, which is really kind of on the thin side, but it's, it's um, sort of like synthetic paper. And you're going to be able to see the difference now between the reactions that you're going to get. So this is the Brea Reese. And I kept this in here just so you can kind of see. Also, it's alcohol inks. 
and I mean it's just fun to watch regardless of what video you're in <laughs> so I'm just going to use my blower here this is probably my favorite tool to use with alcohol inks I can't get enough of it it just gives me such a super fun look I can't get this look with a straw no matter how hard I try um, so I just I really like this and so I'm just dropping in and you can just see it it's moving all the way around and I love it sometimes Dollar Tree has Brea Reese paper so look for it it's got like a purple type of cover on it all right so there's the result of that and then here's the result of the other one it's not as exciting so there we have it we're gonna move on to our next thing next up we have button folders so these are um, a little bit bigger than like a a4 paper so eight and a half by 11 I think it is um, but they have a little button on there. You can get them in all different colors. I picked up this sort of aqua blue and clear. And my idea for these was to use them for storing things. So in order to make them a little bit sturdy. So I have a lot of projects that I'm working on at once. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to put a piece of cardstock, heavyweight cardstock in there. Now I get my cardstock in bulk from Amazon Accent Opaque, 120, 180, and 80. So three different uh, weights and it's really affordable and I don't mind using them for things like this. Um, but I am want to do my projects and try to keep them a little bit organized. And so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to take a holder, sort of like a little bin from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to be able to keep them organized in there, knowing what's coming up and all those, all those things to help me keep my life together. Another cool feature about this is that these button folders, these clear plastic folders, you can write with a dry erase marker on them. So I thought that was great because as I change out the project, I could come back in with something new and just erase it and move on. Now this is a regular dry erase marker, but you can also use wet erase markers, which I highly recommend because they will not smudge once they dry. So the only way to get rid of them is to use something wet like a baby wipe to take off the, the wet erase markers. I would highly recommend them. They are awesome. I'm writing all over whiteboards in my house with these wet erase markers. So um, yeah, so there I can have it off to the side. I kind of know what I'm working on and it just helps me uh, keep my head clear. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try to get fancy with this envelope. Now I had to cut it down on the side, on both sides, because I wanted to fit it into my Happy Planner um, punch because I wanna add this to my planner. And so I'm working on ways to close up the sides. I think I'm just gonna probably use some staples or um, I tried my bag sealer, but it was a bit too thick to actually close it. Um, but I also have the fuse tool, so I will try that as well. But here you can see I punched it just fine with the punch. And now that's going to go in my planner and give me an envelope that I was able to make for a dollar. Because I don't think you can find Happy Planner envelopes for a dollar. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Okay, so we are going to move on to the last product here, which are sequins folders. Did you know that the Dollar Tree had this magic? I was shocked. You should have seen me in the aisle. I look like, I don't know, a six-year-old, just like playing with it, laughing, showing my husband from across the aisle. I mean, th these things are so cute. And they're plastic, which means they're not gonna tear unless you force it to. Ask me how I know, you'll see in just a minute. But I picked up one from the collection. I think there's four in the whole collection. And so I picked them up and of course I got four for my daughter because you know, she just has to have them for school. And uh, you can poke, you know, three hole punch, put them in binders. Um, here's this beautiful one, be a mermaid and make waves. I love that. Just all really encouraging, positive, fun stuff. Um, and then here is a cupcake. So I had to have them. I had no plan for these when I picked them up. I just knew they had to be mine. So I am going to potentially sacrifice one of these. Now I thought, let me put this in my happy planner too, because this would make me super happy. I tell you what, I fiddled with this for easily 15 minutes trying to get this in there. Finally, I realized you can kind of shimmy it down and it fits. But the problem is it's basically four layers that you're trying to cut through. And the happy planner punch was having none of it. I couldn't do it. Then it got stuck and I couldn't pull it out. 
So for another 15 minutes, I'm trying to yank this thing out of this punch. And uh, finally, I mean, I really should have kept the audio on, and but I would have had to bleep out some things uh, because I was uh, about as frustrated as you can be. So I thought, is this it for my happy planner? More importantly, did I just really sacrifice this envelope and this folder like this? I did. So I ripped it out with brute force and she's a goner. There's no save in this one. This one is finished. Um, yeah, but I had to do it, and now you know that maybe this is not the best idea. So I possibly have saved you a dollar. There it is, rips. But it took some force to rip it, so they're pretty good quality. And there it is, up close. Torn, just, it got the, it punched it on the ends, but it did not punch it in the middle. So that's it. Okay, that's all of the products here from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to showcase and see if you can pull them into your craft room as well. And don't forget to look at things a little bit differently when you're shopping because um, a lot of times they can fill a need that you might have already and maybe save a couple bucks. And speaking of saving some bucks, on screen you'll see the first video I did where I picked up a bunch of craft stuff from the Dollar Tree as well. So check that out. Don't forget to comment below what you find at your local Dollar Trees that you love to use in your craft room so that we can all learn. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me. I'll see you in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.